We're excited. It is going to be the quadratic formula. You are right. Way to look ahead. Okay, so the equation, Lindsay, that we are solving by completing the square is x squared plus 6x minus 7. Did I copy that right? Yeah. Now, it says complete the square. That means that we need to move the 7 to the other side. Because we are creating room to add a new number so that this will be something squared. Okay, who remembers from yesterday how to find the number that we add to both sides? Austin Cox, how do we find the number we add to both sides? Um, by uh, finding the square. By, uh, well, we, we do square. square. What do what? How do we find the number that completes the square? Where does that number come from? Um, um, sure. Okay. Somebody help me out, Lexi. Um, we take half of the six. Okay, Austin. We take half of this number mm -hmm. and we square it. Okay. So half of 6 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. So we're going to add 9 to both sides. Okay? So half of 6 squared. Now, what does that make this square then? I know it's x, I know it's plus. What goes here? 3. So this is x plus 3 squared equal to 16. Then what do we do? Square root both sides. So x plus 3 equals plus or minus 4. So x is going to be negative 3 plus or minus 4. Now those add together. What's negative 3 plus 4? What's negative 3 minus 4? So there are the two answers to the question. They add together, we add about. Add these. Moses? Ryan? Can you do a. Uh, 8? 8. 8 is messy in terms of the arithmetic. So I'm going to give you a couple of different options. Um, if, if we don't have a calculator, well actually it doesn't matter whether we have one or not. Um, one way to do this problem would be to divide by 2. Well, that's how we always want to start. We want to start by dividing by 2. And then taking the square root. So where it gets messy is over here, because you have the square root of 17 over 2. Who remembers how to take the square root of a fraction? You do. So that would be plus or minus root 17 over root 2. Now, does that bother anybody? Particularly this right here. Does that bother anybody? I thought you can't have a radical in the denominator. You're right. You can't. Does anybody remember how to get rid of the radical in the denominator? Well, that's you sound like a mathematician. You rationalize it, which means what? How do you do that? Uh, multiply it by the square root of 2. The top and the bottom by the square root of 2. And you do that because now your bottom is the square root of 4, which is just plain 2. Remember, the issue was we had a radical. Now we don't anymore. What do we have on the top, though? plus or minus the square root of 34. 
So we have x minus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 34 over 2. Then we just add 5, Ryan, and we're done. So it's 5 plus or minus the square root of 34 over 2. And you can just leave it like that. Those don't add. It's not like this one where we can actually add them together. They're just done. So that's one option. That would be like the real way of doing the problem. Another option you have is when you divide, you can turn that into a decimal. 8 and a half, 17 divided by 2. Take the square root of both sides. So should you always divide first instead of square, always. square root always. of it? Yeah, all, if, unless, unless the number right here is a perfect square, so if that were a 4, I wouldn't be so worried about it. But if that's not a perfect square, divide it first. And then x would be 5 plus or minus the square root of 8.5. Now, that is not considered the best form possible, but I would certainly accept it. It's a whole lot less work than all this fraction stuff is. Now, 11 is not even cleaned up. So the, the first thing you have to do is get your equation just in shape to solve it. So, Franny, do you understand what I'm talking about? you got to get all your y's together and all your numbers together. So I'm going to add 2y squared to both sides and add 8 to both sides. Now, this is an example, Ryan, where if you wanted to, you could just take the square, square root right now because that's a perfect square. So this would be 2y equals plus or minus root 14. So y equals plus or minus root 14 over 2. Did all that make sense? All those steps make sense, sense for any? Tomorrow we're going to have another quizzy poo, and you're going to have to complete the square tomorrow. So let's practice one. So we can go ahead and do that first. We definitely need to get that number moved over to the other side. There's something else though, Savannah, that needs to be taken care of. Would you agree with me? What is it? Divide by three. We gotta divide by three. Now, Jordan, we can do it in the order you did. Okay? Like you move the nine and then we're gonna divide, but we gotta remember to divide by everything. Everybody good to at this point? Now we're going to complete the square. Okay, so Austin, we're going to give you another chance now. I need to figure out what I'm going to add to both sides. Four. Four. And you got four, Austin, by doing what? Taking half of that number and squaring it. Half of this number and squaring it. Everybody good? Ashley, I did that, or he did that so that he would have a perfect square here. What is his perfect square? X minus two, yep. X minus two. Equals one. Oh, this one's gonna work out nicely. Lauren, what do we do now? So X minus two equals plus or minus the square root of one, which is just one. 
So x equals 2 plus or minus 1. So what are the three, uh, the two answers to the problem? 2 plus 1, Zach Bond. Wait, did you square really get the, uh, mm -hmm. Two plus one is three, two minus one is one. Everybody understand what's happening tomorrow? What do we have to remember to do when we get started? We gotta get rid of this three and move this number, right? Okay, get out your note sheets. Here we go with the quadratic formula. are sunk if we do not know the quadratic formula. remembers? Lauren remembers, Savannah, several of you? Good. Julian, you said it first, so here we go. X equals. Boys and girls, I want you to find a place to write that down on your note sheet. Here we go. X equals. Write that down and write it exactly like I wrote it, which is exactly like Julian said it. That's the formula. Notice that the whole thing is the fraction, not just this part. The whole thing is over 2a. When you look at a quadratic equation, like the first one, x squared plus 8x minus 9 equals 0. This is A, this is B, and this is C. Does everybody remember that? So I write down A equals 1, B equals 8, and C equals negative 9. That keeps me focused on what numbers I'm supposed to be using. Katie, you doing okay? So x equals, here we go, negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared, which is, I'm going to go ahead and write 64. Is that okay with everybody? 8 squared minus 4 times A times C. And Moses, I would recommend writing this down because sometimes if we try to do it all in our head, we end up losing a sign somewhere. Okay? X equals negative 8 plus or minus. Okay, what have I got under here? I've got 64. That's going to end up being plus, isn't it? Yeah. 36? Mm -hmm. So negative 8 plus or minus, oh, that's nice. Did you get 100 under here? And of course, the square root of 100 is 10. So we have our two answers. Plus negative 8 plus 10 over 2 and negative 8 minus 10 over 2. Well, what do those work out to be? Negative 8 plus 10 is 2 divided by 2 is 1. Negative 8 minus 10 is negative 18 divided by 2 is negative As just like when you complete the square, we get two answers, and that happens because of that plus or minus in there. 
Everybody good? All right, let's look at the next one. What's A in the next one? I'm looking at B, problem B. What's A? A is 2. What's B? And C is? All right, would you set that up? Do that one on your own? See how you do? x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 4 times 2 times negative 3. What did you get under here? 49? So you got one half as an answer and negative three as an answer. Did that match yours? Now I skipped a bunch of steps. Do I need to go back and review that for anybody? Did you get these answers? All right, something unusual. We don't. I don't see the need to dwell on this topic. I don't. Like got it. But I do want to look at C because something unusual happens in C, and I want to make sure you're ready for it. It looks just like the others. A is, B is, and C is seven. And my formula, I'm gonna write it down because I think I erased it. Negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC over two A. By the way, you will not be given that formula. That's one that you need to know, but I think you already know it because your algebra teachers did a great job. Negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 4 times 2 times 7. Now, can anybody kind of predict what's going to happen here that's unusual, Julian? I'm going to get a negative under the radical. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a negative under the radical. Now, up until last year, that freaked you out. But now you know how to handle negatives under the radical. Let's see what it turns out to be. It's 9 minus 56, which is negative 47. How did you learn to handle that last year? an imaginary number. So what does that mean? How does that work? It like substitutes for the negative. What substitutes for the negative? The i. The i. So we're going to write negative 3 plus or minus i root 47 over 4. You cannot do anything else. Nothing else simplifies. You can't cancel. You can't combine. This is just the answer. Do all of you remember that when you take the square root of a negative, you bring out an i? So this comes out as an i, and you're left with just root 47, which doesn't break down. Okay? All right. I need a volunteer to come up and do the last one, and then we'll be done for the day. 
So who would be my volunteer to come up and do the last problem, which is here. Hey, there is too much talking. We are supposed to all be doing this problem. but there's no I in it. The only way we get I's is if what happens? Negative. The square root of a negative. If we don't have the square root of a negative, there's no I. Okay. So are you good with your quadratic formula? Yes. Yes. Thank <laughs> you. 